Okay, uh, excuse me about that. Uh, let's see, uh, take two. <laughs> Hopefully, um, I can get this working this time. Let me see if I'm able to do that. Um, so that seemed to crash very quickly. Okay, let me delete that and I will try to share this again. Uh, correctly, hopefully. Hopefully it's not going to crash immediately. Okay, uh, hi. Um, uh, this is Philip from England. I'm a UK native speaker and I first started teaching the IELTS online about um, eight years ago, uh, actually. So I'm an uh, art specialist. I uh, was born and went to school in England. And if you have a question about the IELTS, please go ahead and ask, and I'm happy to answer. I'm just going to try and share this into a couple of groups. Um, and if nobody has a question, then uh, I can actually just go ahead and give my own tips uh, by myself. So hopefully someone may have a question, but otherwise, that's fine. I will just give some tips uh, for myself. Now I'll try to make sure this is not going to crash again, if possible. Okay, um, <clears throat> let me see what's going on here. Still, still working. I can see there's one person here at the moment. Uh, if you have a question about the IELTS, please go ahead and ask. Uh, this is uh, Philip from England. I'm a UK native speaker. I was born and went to school in England. Right, um, so I'm just going ahead now and uh, just uh, trying to make sure that uh, I am sharing, uh, etc. Okay, a couple of people here at the moment. Uh, now, if you have a question about the IELTS, uh, you can just ask for free. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, if you don't want to ask a question, I'm happy to just to give tips myself, and uh, I will do that shortly if there are no questions. Okay, uh, may have uh, right. Maggie Kayako likes the video. Thanks a lot for that. I appreciate that. Uh, right. Um, let me see. Here. Right. So I'm just gonna probably go ahead in a few seconds and just um, uh, kind of give some tips myself um, if there are no questions coming in. So it's not just waiting for questions if people are. Not going to ask them at this time of day or something. Right, uh, just uh, going to quickly share my free forum and then I will start giving tips very shortly if it hasn't crashed by then. Hopefully, not. Right, um, there we go. That's the one. Right, okay, I'm just going to give, uh, very shortly, I'm going to start giving some tips about the IELTS exam. Um, unless anyone has a question, I will just go ahead myself. So it's not just listening to me speaking and uh, nobody saying anything else. Right, um, so, um, just going to approve all that. Okay, let's get started. Um, Right, I've got to actually move very slowly just in case the webcam has an error if I move too fast. Okay, uh, right, let's go ahead and uh, um, this is uh, Philip from OnlineEnglishTeacher.com. You can just see on the whiteboard here. And uh, if you have a question about the IELTS, uh, please go ahead and ask. I'm happy to answer. I'm an IELTS specialist, UK native speaker, born and went to school in England. Okay, and if you have a question, please go ahead and write. I'm happy to answer any questions as best as I know. I'll, right, I'm going to start anyway giving tips uh, if nobody has a question. So, uh, the first tip I'm going to give is um, for the, I'll just give general tips probably to start. Now, the first general tip is uh, try to have like a study plan. So, um, the, the, of course, you'll need to know what is your level now and what grade do you need to get. Um, and so you need to test yourself uh, basically to uh, see what is your level at the moment um, and uh, then 
uh, you'll need to uh, you know see what grade you need to get and then try and work out how long that's going to take um, so basically uh, there are four sections for the IELTS uh, writing speaking listening and reading and uh, so basically uh, you need to you may need to you know get a minimum score for each of those uh, so um, this this can take some time okay um, and um, so to get your speaking and writing score you unless you've taken the exam you will need an English teacher to uh, check your your level most likely um, or oh, can be helpful right somebody uh, has sent me a message here uh, right no not for me personally okay I'm just trying to move slowly because my web camera seems to crash the browser if I move fast so if you're wondering where I'm moving it slowly <laughs> okay uh, so basically uh, try to um, make a schedule see where you're at now what grade you need to get you know uh, this can all help uh, of course if you're just studying at school as well that can uh, and you have an idea of your level you can uh, you can uh, do that uh, use that as well okay uh, right uh, next tip is um, for the exam it takes a lot of energy you know for thinking and writing and everything like that so make sure that you uh, have uh, plenty of food uh, before uh, you know before the the exam but of course you don't really have like a huge you know pizza 30 minutes before the exam that's not going to work obviously for digestion uh, so make sure you have like a good meal like lot you know I'm not a qualified nutritionist but I just but I just I just say basic uh, knowledge so for example maybe you have a big meal the, the day before and then oh, if your exam is in the morning you have some you know like some uh, uh, bread or fruit you know something's gonna not be very heavy in the stomach of it and will just allow you to kind of function reasonably okay uh, right um, then the next tip for the IELTS exam is um, uh, try to do general tips uh, try to make sure that you're not rushing to get to the uh, test center so you know maybe if you're traveling you can get a hotel reasonably close so you can walk there uh, make sure you know where it is. You don't want to say, "Well, you know, I'll try and find it on the day," and then you know, give give yourself 15 minutes to find it. it you know, if that doesn't work, you may be late. Okay. Uh, so basically, make sure you have a relaxed journey. You know, arriving on time, early, etc. Uh, next tip for the IELTS exam is uh, make sure that you um, bring. Uh, items that are allowed you can't bring you know into the exam room a dictionary um, and for the writing exam you can only bring uh, I think believe I think it's something like pencil pen and eraser so uh, make sure that you are not uh, bringing in lots of items you know which you just couldn't use um, I think for the speak for the speaking exam um, and now I never actually Although I'm a, because I'm a native speaker, I've never actually taken the arts exam. I've never needed to, basically, um, and uh, for immigration or anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm from the UK. Uh, so for the speaking, as far as I'm aware, you can bring water, but you possibly may not be able to bring it actually into the exam room. But you may be able to leave it outside. So um, basically, you know, bring some water and then see what happens. I guess. Uh, but but expect you may need to uh, possibly you may need to uh, leave it outside. Uh, the next uh, tip for the IELTS exam I'll give and uh, uh, is uh, is to <coughs> excuse me uh, the next tip is to um, uh, understand the exam. So basically, you know, it's it has four sections: reading, writing, speaking, listening. The reading exam has uh, three three parts. Uh, test one, test two, test three, um, and uh, then the uh, each one is twenty minutes total, sixty minutes. The speaking exam has three parts. Um, it's about eleven to fourteen minutes, um, and um, 
um, the first part is a warm up and then uh, there is a cue card section and then there are follow up questions theoretical follow up questions although some of the uh, follow up questions are read don't seem to be too closely connected perhaps to the question ex exactly itself or maybe it was more connected to the answer of the student I, was, I wasn't there um, anyway um, so um, then you have the um, uh, uh, listening section which is uh, 40 minutes 30 minutes answering and 10 minutes uh, transferring uh, notes uh, to the answer sheet uh, has four sections um, and uh, last of all you have the writing section which is 60 minutes uh, part one part two and uh, 20 minutes for task one uh, you need to write minimum 150 words and uh, uh, 40 minutes for task two, you need to write minimum 100, uh, sorry, minimum 250 words. Um, and uh, then normally for the writing exam, it is a paper exam. So you can't, um, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, hope you're going to write, use a computer. Computer is, is available for people who have disabilities, you know, like they, you know, unfortunately can't use one of their arms or whatever. Uh, they may, you know, or, or have minimal vision or whatever it would be, uh, you need to check if you're asking for that. Okay, uh, hi, All right, I'll just uh, introduce myself again, and uh, hi, uh, anyone uh, who is uh, here, uh, the numbers are not very much, very many, going up and down. Um, this is, anyway, this is, this is Philip from England, uh, I'm a UK native speaker and IELTS specialist, my website is onlineenglishteacher.com. Uh, this is quite a late night um, web uh, cast, so maybe this is why not so many people are here. Um, anyway, and uh, yes, if you have a question about the IELTS, uh, please do go ahead and ask. I'm happy to answer. Okay, uh, right. Uh, next, uh, next comment is um, for the IELTS exam. <coughs> uh, uh, try to um, uh, yes yeah, so try okay I'll just go maybe through uh, tips for uh, each section and I'll start with um, tips for the uh, writing exam uh, for the writing exam uh, the first tip is uh, get used to using a uh, pen and uh, pencil pen or pencil uh, the exam is normally pen or pencil, and most people uh, don't normally use a pen and pencil. So uh, make sure that you know you are uh, you are uh, ready for that, uh, because that can actually help the grade uh, in the exam. So um, you know, for the exam, you can you can bring a uh, uh, a, a pen or pencil, and uh, also there are, you can use an eraser. Um, and so get used to kind of writing at uh, reasonable speed, and uh, that that will definitely help for the exam. If for most people, perhaps because most people don't normally use a pen or pencil writing a long essay. Okay. Uh, next tip for the writing exam is uh, make sure that your errors are uh, clearly erased don't just kind of write something and then change the word and you know hope they get a new word so basically unless you're gonna erase it with a pencil I recommend just put a line through it and then write above it uh, the, uh, the the new word because if you write like one word and then write another word over it the examiner may say well which is which which is the first which is the second and and can they even read it? Okay, so something to try and avoid, uh, I guess. Um, <clears throat> the next uh, tip is uh, make sure that all your letters are very clear. Uh, you don't want, uh, like, you know, you want the letters to look exactly what they're meant to look like. Um, so the examiner is not sort of guessing and thinking, well, you know, this this is meant to be this, or that is meant to be that, or whatever. Okay, uh, right, uh, the next tip is um, uh, understand the types of questions uh, that, that may be asked. Uh, so, you know, if you're, uh, if you're taking the, ac the academic, 
uh, then uh, it'll be uh, questions about uh, uh, graphs, tables for task one, and more of an academic type question for task two. And then for uh, general, it'll be a letter for task one. Um, and uh, the other big difference will be for re for reading, where the as far as I recall, the task three is the same, and the the, the task one and task two will be easier for in general, although the grading is easier for academics, so maybe it sounds a bit confusing, I'm not trying to uh, say it sounds absolutely obvious, but uh, maybe there's a good lo good logic behind it. Uh, okay, uh, right, okay, uh, and uh, right, hi everybody, uh, anybody who's just joining, uh, this is Philip from England, um, a UK native uh, English teacher, and my website is onlineenglishteacher.com uh, if you have a question uh, please do go ahead and ask Some, not very many people here just coming and going um, and uh, okay and uh, if you also if you just want to get in touch uh, my email is uh, info at uh, onlineenglishteacher.com and my skype is IELTS online English teacher so as you can guess I kind of specialize in the IELTS and I first started teaching it online uh, about uh, uh, eight years ago actually uh, right okay now if you have a question please do go ahead and write it so this is free to ask a question and I will do my best to try and answer okay uh, right no questions at the moment so oh hang on there's some comment or like or something I will have a look and try and see what that's about so if you have a question uh, right I had a like f uh, oh hang on uh, oh no this is not uh, anything to do with that um, right anyway let me go ahead with more uh, tips here very quiet I thought there'd be maybe more uh, I thought there'd be more um, uh, people who uh, would be joining at this time, but uh, I guess not. Right, sorry, there's a fly just coming here. Right, uh, next tip for the uh, writing exam is uh, make sure that you understand the question. Uh, I mean, it sounds obvious, uh, but if you're answering a different question, it doesn't matter if your English is great, you're going to lose you know a significant amount of grade uh, perhaps uh, from the task response uh, section whatever that would be uh, which may be enough to fail uh, unfortunately so make sure you're answering the correct question uh, it's easy just to say well I'm gonna quickly start but make sure you actually answer the question directly uh, next tip for the writing exam is um, use synonyms so don't um, don't um, uh, just uh, start, uh, you know, copying the question vocabulary, um, and that goes for speaking as well. Uh, for the speaking exam, you don't want to, to just like, if they say, "What is your favorite food?" You don't want to say, "My favorite food is." Uh, then you could say something like. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I like uh, personally. I like visiting a local restaurant which has Spanish cuisine. Uh, you know, Spanish uh, dishes or whatever. Okay. Uh, next step for the writing exam is. And by the way, if anyone has a question, please do go ahead and write it, and I'm happy to answer. So, um, right. The next step for the uh, the next step for the uh, uh, writing exam is. Um, let me see here. Uh, the next step for the writing exam is um, give examples. Like, like I, um, I, I normally recommend sort of give specific examples. Uh, don't just um, uh, you know get, be very philosophical or general. Uh, try to go in a bit of detail. Uh, so that's sort of what I normally recommend. Um, the next, uh, the next tip for uh, the uh, writing exam is um, make sure that you have enough time for checking. 
so basically, um, you know, you, you for the task one, you could write for 15 minutes and check for five. And for the task two, uh, you could write for uh, uh, 30, for, uh, 30 minutes and check for 10. So basically, uh, 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 make sure that uh, you are, uh, make sure that you have uh, uh, enough time for checking. Uh, very important. And uh, some people say they're just going to check, you know, when they're writing. Uh, 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 you know, I'm not sure. Now, hang on, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Uh, okay, someone's just made a comment. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's positive or negative. Uh, this is from Magi. Hi, Magi. They said, oh, it's so surprising. Uh, I don't know why, but um, let me see here. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, who knows? Uh, right. Anyway. Uh, and uh, okay. Uh, next question is uh, sorry, next uh, tip is uh, for the writing. Uh, try not to have very short sentences. Um, maybe for the uh, general letter you can have like sometimes you know it just depends but uh, generally I recommend perhaps something like and it's not a goal it's not a hundred percent rule for example just something like 15 to 25 words um, for uh, your um, uh, for the length of a sentence uh, so don't go for like 10 words or five word sentences uh, it doesn't I don't think it looks very impressive personally and uh, and also don't go for like you know 50 word sentences and one of the reasons for that is that uh if you write like a oh i have a comment excellent from claudia right um, I, I was hoping for questions so let me see hello in your opinion what is the most important advice about the speaking parts of the ielts excellent question question claudia i'll just send a uh, friend request uh okay uh, right, uh, so basically, right, I'll just go to Claudia's question, right, this is what I'm looking for, questions, thank you for that. Um, I'll just like it. Um, the, you know, I would say the, the number one piece of advice, I mean, there, there's lots of advice. Uh, the number one piece of advice uh, that I've found is just don't speak very fast. I mean, it sounds a bit strange uh, of a strange comment. Uh, but uh, some people think if they speak super fast, it's gonna, you know, somehow impress the examiner. Uh, but you know, the examiners aren't stupid people, right? <laughs> well, they shouldn't be if they're examiners. And and uh, and I'm not saying that you know anyone will be stupid enough to, in normal speech, to necessarily be impressed with that in the world. Uh, because basically, if you're just speaking very fast, um, and you're making a whole lot of errors, and your pronunciation isn't clear. It's not going to impress anyone, or it shouldn't. And um, so, I would definitely don't. I recommend don't speak super fast. I mean, would you know? The um, that's just my opinion. Uh, I think if you speak super fast and your English isn't good, you're just going to make mistakes faster. You know, basically. And it kind of it sounds unnatural uh, because native speakers, um, uh, you know, don't normally speak very fast. You know, necessarily, or in a business meeting, a formal interview, or something. Um, so, if you're speaking super fast, uh, you know, the examiner, like, you know, for a native speaker, uh, every word you speak, uh, you know, as long as it's sp pronounced clearly, we'll, we'll know if it's correct or false, basically, you know, generally speaking, um, to, to a large extent at least, um, depending on the, you know, the, if it's a long sentence. But yeah, I mean, basically, we'll pick it up. So speak at a normal speed. That's just my uh, uh, comment. Uh, you know, I've had some students who speak, who speak, you know, at least one or more who spoke very fast, and they thought it was a good strategy. Um, but basically, you, you know, if you just if your English isn't good, it won't make any difference at all. And 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 even I'd say, if your English is even perfect, like close to a native level, uh, I still don't think it's really. It's, it's just basically unnatural because natives. Excuse me. Native speakers don't speak super fast, so you know it would just be um, it would just be kind of strange um, uh, to the examiner. So I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, 
And I'll need to refer to the uh, band descriptors. Let me just uh, do that quickly. Um, just to be a bit more confident what I'm saying exactly. Um, right, let me see here. So I'm not just saying something which is, is inaccurate at all. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the uh, band descriptors here. And there are uh, four parts. Fluency and cohesion, uh, let's go resource, meaning vocabulary, uh, grammar, and pronunciation. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, certainly if you're speaking super fast, you may lose out on coherence. Uh, because, you know, if, you, if it's just very hard to even hear what you're saying, for example, if, you know, if, if the words are not... Uh, enunciated clearly and um, pronunciation would be uh, is um, oh I see I, I see fluency coherent coherence maybe I should be more familiar with this excuse me um, well I, I'm not sure I'm not sure then maybe I'm correct so it speaks coherently and then pronunciation so yeah, so ba basically, you're likely to lose. Uh, you, you know, first of all, if you're if it's speaking unnaturally, uh, you're likely to you know lose out somewhere or other. Most likely, uh, I think it's a. I'm not an arts examiner, but I think it's fairly logical because you're just sounding unnatural, and uh, in, and in any case, there may be many a other aspects that uh, you are just failing on. So as I said, the, the arts examiners, uh, like everyone else in the world, I'm not saying anyone's stupid, shouldn't be stupid. <laughs> And uh, they're not like, oh, they're not like a robot and it's like, oh, too much information, grade 9, grade 9, <laughs> overload. <laughs> so so basically, yeah, anyway, I'm not making fun of anyone. I'm just saying, um, basically, don't do it. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, I, I think that makes sense to somebody, surely, I hope. Right, excellent question, Claudia. Uh, so basically, speak at a normal speed. Uh, I think I'm speaking, I normally... Maybe I speak quite fast. Normally, I'm speaking reasonably average, an average speed, uh, fairly relaxed at the moment. Uh, speed, uh, so uh, something like this, you know, this is not how I would speak. I would speak more, you know, uh, connect, uh, in a more connected way and uh, active way for the exam. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yes, yeah, so anyway, don't speak super fast. <laughs> That's just my best uh, tip. Um, the best way to have good English, you know, is not to try and trick the examiner because the, the, you speak so fast they can't understand you, which you're likely, you know, you may well be, you know, logically graded down for as well. Um, <clears throat> the the best way is to actually speak in a, with good English, good vocabulary, good grammar, you know, clear pronunciation, uh, fluently, and uh, with uh, coherence. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, so develop topics coherently and appropriately. Okay, so sorry, my analysis here may not be exactly right. What I was saying. Um, okay, right. Any in any case, so yes, you, uh, certainly for one of the sections, probably most likely yeah, pronunciation there. Um, it would just be unnatural, wouldn't it? Uh, fluently. Okay, speaks coherently. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm a bit tired. Excuse me. I'm not thinking particularly. Uh, logically there. Okay, so anyway, uh, so that would be the um, my best answer there. Um, don't speak super fast. Right, uh, okay, excellent. Uh, next uh, next tip, uh, well I'll give a few tips for the speaking exam, just for memory. Um, and uh, I've actually written a free book about the arts as well, uh, tips, if you uh, want to get hold of that. Uh, anyway. Uh, you can just search for IELTS ebook, and my website is onlineenglishteacher.org. Uh, uh, other tips uh, for the uh, speaking exam, or just maybe from my memory, I'll just give like at least ten tips for the speaking exam now. Uh, for task two, make bullet points. Try and make at least ten bullet points. Uh, sorry, uh, fifteen bullet points. Um, for the uh, task one, uh, think about the types of questions you may be asked. Um, uh, for uh, like. Um, uh, uh, so think about the questions you may be asked uh, uh, for, um, like where do you live, what do you do, what do you, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, then uh, that's tip two, just from memory. Uh, tip three is if you don't understand, ask the examiner. You know, don't just try and guess the question. You can guess incorrectly. 
uh, tip uh, four um, is uh, think about aspects of pronunciation for native speakers. You know, we link the words together. Um, a non-native speaker would say, "Can I have a piece of, you know, a piece of cake?" And a native speaker would say, "Can I have a piece of cake?" You know, that's just exaggerating, perhaps, but uh, just to give an example. So, what was that? Tip number three or something? Uh, tip number four uh, is. Um, um, uh, yes, yeah, so do lots of practice exams, um, and uh, so you can kind of get better at that. Uh, tip number f uh, five: um, um, record. Uh, maybe you can just like record yourself, and just to become aware of your accent could be useful. Uh, tip number six for the speaking exam: um, try wear something smart. You know, I think it just kind of if you wear something smart, it can also reflect on your mind to give you more confidence, perhaps. Uh, tip, you know, just uh, tip number six. Uh, treat it like a business meeting, very you know formal, and just sort of be confident, polite. You know, just think about the psychology of your mind if you're nervous at all. Uh, tip number seven. Uh, drink some water before the exam to uh, to um, uh, kind of uh, speak a bit more fluently. Um, and uh, tip number uh, seven. Um, um, Yes. Yeah, so, uh, tip number seven: um, um, just um, uh, do read through lots of practice exams to become familiar with the kind of structure. Uh, tip number eight uh, for the speaking exam: um, make sure that you um, don't use different languages. You know, I first taught the arts uh, about eight years ago, and you know, I've taught various Arabic students, and some of them say "yane, yane." It's Arabic. It means you can say <laughs> so. Don't say that there. Uh, tip number nine: um, Try to um, um, let me think here. Um, another tip I haven't said already. Um, um, yes. Yeah, so try to alter the questions. So don't kind of just repeat the same vocabulary. If they say, "What is your favorite food?" Don't say, "My favorite food is," and uh, tip uh, 10 uh, I can give for the uh, speaking exam is um, don't give very short answers you know it's uh, it's not you know it's don't treat it like some sort of police interrogation although I'm not saying people do uh, but in that sense don't give like one word answers they want to hear you speak English and uh, also I can just give another tip for TAS2 you know, your ideas don't have to be something amazing. They just need to be reasonable, logical. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. Um, okay, and then of course um, check out the band descriptors, which I maybe need to just refresh my memory a little bit. Although I'm a little bit tired at the moment, perhaps. And um, uh, anyway, so uh, etc. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so yes, and oh, I'll put the link for the band descriptors. I'll just refresh my memory here. Probably need a little bit as well. And uh, for the speaking uh, band descriptors. Uh, another tip for the uh, speaking exam is, um, um, you know, just try and try and keep it. I think try and keep it r honest. I mean, I do recommend it uh, in any case. But if you know, if you have some really unusual question, uh, re unusual answer, and then the examiner says, "Oh, that's interesting. Tell me about this," and then you, you know, never happened. That just is going to cause trouble, probably. Um, and uh, uh, another tip, I'll just give one more tip for the speaking exam before I finish. Uh, try to, um, let me see here. Uh, oh yes, be, just be aware it's 11 to 14 minutes, the speaking exam. So it's a high energy, high focus uh, exam. So basically you've got to be at the top of your game. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I uh, hope this has been helpful uh, to some people. My website is onlineenglishteacher.com. Uh, my name is Philip uh, from England, a UK energy speaker. I first taught the IELTS online about uh, eight years ago, and um, and uh, oh yes, I have some uh, e-courses I've made and a private uh, study forum. It's half price at the moment, so do check it out if you're interested. Okay, uh, my Skype ID is IELTS online English teacher. My email is info at onlineenglishteacher.com. And uh, hang on, I'm just going to see if there's any. Uh, messages or something that's come in uh, nothing at the moment so have a fantastic day <clears throat> excuse me uh, have a fantastic day I think I'm uh, uh, gonna 
uh, check out the uh, band descriptors, just refresh my memory, uh, needs a little bit re re refreshing or something here, and uh, then uh, call it a night, I'm in the UK so it's quite late, thanks a lot.